Good evening and welcome to our prayers for Sunday evening. I'm going to begin with the service of light, which if you're following in a prayer book, you'll find on page 434. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. If you're following in your prayer books, you might like to say with me the um, hymn, Hail Gladdening Light. Hail Gladdening Light of his pure glory poured, who is the immortal Father, heavenly blessed, holiest of holies, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we come to the sun's hour of rest, and the lights of evening round us shine. We hymn the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit divine. Worthiest art thou at all times to be sung, with undefiled tongue. Son of our God, giver of life alone, therefore in all the world thy glories, Lord, they own. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And the general thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are full of loving kindness for your whole creation and we, your creatures, glorify you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Reverting back to evening prayer, we um, go straight to our psalm. This evening it's Psalm 23, which you can follow on page 243 of the prayer book. You might like to read along with me. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures, and lead me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord of life, by the power of your resurrection, deliver us from all unselfishness, and bring us to the fullness of joy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And our reading this evening is the very end of the letter of the Romans, chapter 16, verses 17 to the end. Paul's final instructions and his final blessing for his readers. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep an eye on those who cause dissension and offences in opposition to the teaching that you have learned Avoid them. For such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by their small talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the simple-minded. For while your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I want you to be wise in what is good and guileless in what is evil. The God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my co-worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my relatives. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Cortus greet you. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel, and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, 
and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever. Amen. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. This afternoon I've gathered with uh, some GFS people, Girls Friendly Society people by Zoom for our World Day of Prayer. Some of our local people were here at my home, a small group of us, COVID safe, um, but we were gathering with people around Australia uh, by Zoom and uh, some people from Papua New Guinea too as we gave thanks for the ministry of GFS worldwide and joined in a service prepared by GFS in South Sudan. We actually celebrate it on the Feast of St Michael and All Angels, so they are the readings we had today, although we were a little late for that celebration. One of those readings is about Nathaniel, and I found it a very interesting reading, and I thought I would reflect a little on it um, in our time too. Let me just read the portion we had in our earlier service. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe me because you, I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The end of that reading links to a Genesis reading where Jacob dreams that he is a... Um, at the foot of the ladder um, going to heaven and sees the angels coming up and down. And I think in that reading um, and in the other readings set for Michael and all angels, we have a set of readings which are really about where heaven and earth meet. And at the end of our Romans reading, as Paul blesses everybody, again there's that sense that our lives are caught up in the life of God. Um, and as Paul writes to people and blesses them, there's a sense that heaven and earth are meeting at that moment. Now, Nathaniel isn't someone we know a lot about. We know that he was one of the 12 disciples through John's Gospel. We don't hear about him in Matthew, Mark and Luke, though people think that probably he's Bartholom called Bartholomew there, that they're the same person, uh, and that Bartholomew may be a reference to his father, where Nathaniel might be his own name. Who knows? Um, we know that he's a friend of Philip. And we know that he's a man who deals with the truth, no deceit. Um, so I imagine he's someone very honest and straightforward. And I sort of picture Nathaniel as someone that you won't die wondering what he thinks. He's pretty direct. Early church tradition adds a few possibilities about who he might be. Um, uh, it's possible he travelled to India and Armenia and spread the gospel there. Uh, and that he was murdered by the uh, martyred at the hands of the brother of the king. He had converted the king to the Christian faith. Uh, the brother of the king was outraged and had him crucified, uh, whipped and then crucified with his head down. All of that tells us that Nathaniel is faithful. And Nathaniel's journey of faith began because of a friend of his who invited him into that journey. Philip had met Jesus. Something in Philip stirred about that meeting. He was excited and so he went to see his friend Nathaniel and said, come and come with me. You know, we have just met the Messiah. Initially, Nathaniel was sceptical, 
And he just said, from Nazareth, as we heard, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, Philip didn't debate with Nathaniel about that, as he could have. He simply said to him, come and see. Come and see for yourself. And so Nathaniel, trusting his friend, went to see. And it was his own encounter with Jesus, which we heard in that reading, which enabled him to believe for himself. Himself. And John tells us that when Nathaniel met Jesus, he believed everything about him. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. It's a moment when he has a glimpse of divine glory. I think the life of our church is full of people who have said to others at times, come and see. Perhaps someone said to you, come and see, and a journey of faith was begun. That was certainly how it was for me. Someone said to me, come and see, and come along to this girls group. And a journey of faith was begun as I encountered God through that ministry. might be interesting for you to talk to others about who said to you, come and see, how they said it and what that journey was like. At the heart of our faith is sharing good news we believe with those around them inviting them to come and see for themselves and be transformed by the encounter with God. Today we give thanks to the, for the many people who have said to us and to others in our church, come and see, who have invited them to meet God and make their own journey with God. And we need to pray, and today is an opportunity giving thanks but also praying that the Holy Spirit will continue to enliven us in faith, that we might invite others to that place where heaven and earth meet also, and where we may be both people who say, come and see, and also who say, here is the Son of God. We continue our evening prayer with the Magnificat. Page 388 My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, in your wisdom you have so ordered our earthly life that we must walk by faith and not by sight. Give us such trust in your fatherly care that in the face of all perplexities we may give proof of our faith by the courage of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. We pray to you, O God, that your holy angels may lead us in the paths of peace and goodwill. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offences. We pray to you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and for the whole world. 
we pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Those in sickness, those who will die this night and those who mourn, pray in your care for them. We pray to you, O Lord. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus equip us with everything good so that we may do his will, to whom be glory for ever. Amen.